Okay, I'm going to show you how to bake with the zebra pot using the included dish and a hot hand. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and a hot hand. It's totally good. Um, <laughs> first, what you need is a handful of some relatively small rocks. You just want to kind of like quarter to half dollar size. Just kind of fill up the bottom. It's probably more than I actually need, but you put some in there, and then you can bake in here. The idea behind baking in the woods is thermal mass. Always remember thermal mass. Now, there's a lot of people that make woods ovens and stuff, they'll turn a pot on its side and like put coals around it and everything, that's fine. But heat control is really difficult that way because the outside temperature is constantly fluctuating. It cools off, it heats up, it's just all over the place. You put the rocks in there and seal it off, you have a consistent temperature because these rocks heat up and just hold it. So now what I recommend is first, with the lid on, get your rocks preheated. You put the lid on in case there's moisture in the rocks and they pop. You don't want that shooting out all over the place, hitting you in the face, going through your tarp, whatever. So the lid will take care of that. We get the rocks preheated. Now, while we're doing that, we're gonna, on the side, mix up. Got some uh, Betty Crocker triple berry muffin mix. Now, basically, I just go for anything that's just add water. This says half a cup of water for the entire mix. Now, that's not gonna fit in here. This says it makes six muffins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up some in here and pour it into here. Uh, I'm probably going to grease it with uh, either some cooking oil or some butter. Probably butter. It's going to taste better. And then we're going to bake. Get back to you on that. I put my little dish on the heat here to preheat it so I can melt the butter on it. And then I've got my little multi-tool so I can actually touch it. So what I'm gonna do is unwrap the sides of the butter here. And then just, man, I got some dirt in there too, that's cool. Crunchy. <laughs> all right, it's all greased. It's filthy, but it's greased. Oh, and I got this little binder clip. It's really no big deal to carry a couple of these things around. So when you're only using part of something like this, you can... By the way, if you fold the corners in like this and then fold it over, you get a really good seal. No air or moisture is getting through that. Clip it, and you're good to go to put it back. So let's, let's do half of it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing. Uh, she she about died when you did that. <laughs> she laughed at her and slapped and uh, But how old was it when that came out? <laughs> Probably a pretty good consistency. Spin that in there. Spin that around in there a little bit. Boom, boom. Now, our rocks are definitely hot. None of them have exploded, which is good news. Not what I was expecting, but I looked back. All right, now it's assembled. So what we're gonna do is set it 
And forget it. In the heat. Oh, so the rocks are still getting hot. I'm gonna grab another stick. And we're gonna set a couple of coals on top. All right, so got a couple coals sitting on top of it there now. And we're just gonna let it sit like that. And we're gonna check on it in, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, see how it looks. Decide, uh, oh, also, another point. Rotate the thing frequently to maintain even heat, because otherwise it's gonna be all burned on one side and you don't want that. I've seen a lot of people doing camp cooking uh, where they'll just like put a steak on a grill or whatever and then just leave it that way and then flip it over. You can't do that. This does not put out even heat. You have to move things around so it cooks evenly. That's the only way it works. If you saw the way our lamb burgers turned out, that's how that works. So, all right, we'll get back to you. All right, it's been 10 minutes. 11. 11 minutes, uh-oh. Yep. So I'm gonna push the coals off of the top. It's got a ways. Ooh. It's close. It is close. So I'm gonna rotate it more. more minutes not too long it's been a couple of minutes anyhow let's see uh, I'd say that looks good wait make it go make a bush uh, too quick then you can poke it and see if it's done oh. bush crap toothpick bush crap toothpick yep Done. She's perfect. There she is. We're going to let that rest for a minute and then I'm going to take it out. Alright, well there it is. So here's the deal about this. Um, about a month ago it was Todd's birthday and I had put that mix in there so I could do this as a birthday cake for him, but um, we didn't go anywhere. So. Happy birthday to Todd. Happy birthday to Todd. You know, I stopped my entire family from saying Happy this. birthday to Todd. <laughs> Happy birthday to Todd. Woo, that wasn't redundant at all. Thank you, Nick. So, we've baked a cake. Now, we're going to make a biscuit. got now this quick cheese and garlic biscuit mix again just add water um, I haven't experimented with a lot of things as of yet uh, but in my mind at least higher temperature baking stuff would be a better idea um, if you're getting something that needs to bake at like 325 or something like that, you might start running into problems. So the instructions on that cake were uh, 425, I believe, and this is 450. So that's fine. So we're gonna take. Let me take this. Get this last one in this package. Form that biscuit around towards the edges of the dish, not to the edges of the dish. It will expand. About like that. Alright, into the pot. Break coal out of the fire. Put some coals on there. And then let it bake. 
I'm gonna give it a little rotate over here and there. All right, well, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna get the coals off of here. And that biscuit is not done. That's not a done biscuit. We're gonna put the coals back on top again. All right, we're gonna give it a little while longer. Uh, it's been about six more minutes now. Uh, again. Just knock the coals off of this. Get it off. A little more heat on the top, I think. Yeah. It is so close to done. Coals on the top again. A few more minutes. So we've got the coals sitting on there, uh, getting it a little warmer. While it's doing that, I want to bring up that sometimes coals can be hard to come by if you're in a conifer forest, for example. If you've got fir, hemlock, spruce, cedar, any of those kinds of things, it can be really difficult to come up with coals. They just kind of burn to ash. What you can do instead, if you can find a relatively flat rock that's close enough to the same size as your lid, get that hot in the fire set that on top of the pot instead. Very that carefully. That will do the same job. Do not handle a hot rock with your hands. I wouldn't even recommend it with gloves. Use... A pair of sticks is flimsy. Honestly, I would recommend you make yourself a pair of bushcraft tongs to do the task. Um, I may at some point do a video on how to do that, but in the meantime, Check out Carolina Chris Outdoors. He has a really good video on how to make yourself a set of bushcraft tongs. Um, I don't remember the exact title of it, but that's in the title, so go ahead and look that up if you don't know. And I think it's about time to check this again. Get this coals out of the way. Now that we've jibba jabbed long enough. That looks like a done biscuit. Put those coals back in the fire where they belong. Turn Todd's shoe out of the way so I don't burn it. Thank you. Get that out of there. Set the rocks off to the side to cool down. Dump them. Break the biscuit loose from the dish. We're gonna let that cool for a minute and then we're gonna eat it. Not very good lighting. But there's our biscuit. She looks good. It's a big biscuit. So we're gonna have that.